and I'm sending you live right now. Thank you. Hello everyone, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for attending this uh, What Works event today, and I would like to welcome you all. Uh, my name is uh, Ghadir Abu Shamat, and I'm the school uh, uh, head of school for Al Khalid International School and Vice President Education at GEMS. We're here today to talk about how our school is celebrating Expo 2020 and building the momentum. Uh, I would like to welcome all the panel uh, panelists for today. We have uh, Italian, unfortunately, she couldn't make it because of technical issues. We have a Priya, uh, teaching and learning coach and educational supervisor from GEMS Modern uh, Academy. Welcome, Priya. We have Perry, a grade 11 student from GEMS Modern Academy. Welcome. And we have Domini, uh, instructional leader for the arts, secondary visual art teacher univer from Universal American School. And we have Brahim from grade 12 from Universal American School as well. Welcome to you all. Before starting, I will move to Magnus to have an icebreaker activity, and then we will start our discussion and I will be the facilitator and moderator. Thank you, Magnus. Yes, thank you so much, Kadir. Thank you. Uh, I want to welcome everyone as well, just like Kadir said. Exciting topic today about Expo 2020. And uh, now I'd just like to, uh, I've just put in the, the chat feature on the right hand side of your screen there, if we could all log on to menti.com and use the code 88865260. We have a quick icebreaker question here. I'm just going to share my screen as well. Just give me a second here. I wish for you all to answer that first question. Um, hope you can all see my screen here. So the first question here, what was, what, sorry, there's been a mistake here with the, the writing. What has been your highlight with Expo 2020 so far? So what has been your highlight with Expo 2020 so far? I understand many of you have, have attended Expo. You've been there with your school, with your class and you've experienced the Expo uh, School Center. So what has been your highlight with Expo 2020 so far? A lot of uh, people I understand, you know, I've tried various types of foods, I'm sure. You've visited the various pavilions as well, and you've potentially seen some performance that have inspired you. So what has been your highlight with Expo 2020? We have our first answer, popsicles. So someone has received some popsicles. <laughs> that is wonderful. That always cheers everyone up. Have, have any of you been to the, the Garden in the Sky or any of the installations in Terra? Have you seen, I understand that uh, the Dutch Pavilion has a vertical farm, for instance, and Latvia has a sounding forest, and that sounds absolutely amazing. So the main highlight here is from somebody else's innovation and intelligence, certainly lots of innovation. Uh, the Moving Garden, wonderful, wonderful. We have the, the mysterious water fountain as well. I'm sure you've seen the images from that. It looks absolutely amazing. Fantastic pavilions, lovely to see. The fact that the world is gathered in Expo 2020 and the organization is just perfect. Absolutely, what a fantastic event we've created here. Really, really wonderful. So wonderful to see so many countries coming to participate as well. The visiting numbers are fantastic and schools, that schools get the opportunity that is just a fantastic thing to do and something that will that will stay in their memory for years to come. So what has been your highlight with Expo 2020? I understand that a few of you are still logging on to this, this um, webinar, but we'll leave it there. And I ask you all please to stay on to Menti because we will use uh, uh, Menti for a couple of questions later on. We have our last uh, highlight here and it's the German Pavilion. I don't know too much about the German Pavilion, but, but I'm sure it's wonderful. I'm going to visit myself next week, so I'm excited for that. But I'm now going to hand over back to Gadir and she will kick off the, this wonderful discussion that we're about to have today. So over to Gadir. Thank you so, so much, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you so much, Magnus, and thank you for those who participated. So uh, in 2013, uh, Dubai was announced from Paris to host Expo 2020, and the work have been actually extraordinary over the past seven to eight years now. So um, let's have the uh, participants 
perspective when it comes to the celebration and how are we celebrating Expo. Let me start with Priya, please. From your own perspective and your experience, how are you celebrating Expo in your school? Uh, so, Gadir, you know, um, as an educator, I think uh, what would probably come to my mind first would be yes, there is, you know, there's excitement and there is that sense of learning and that sense. But what really connects to me is that sense of belonging. And I think I should use the word connection. Mm -hmm. uh, connections that I've made and I am um, connections in you know different in a, in uh, in different ways. Um, I have to probably bring to front here that uh, you know we are so proud to be one of the probably the one of the first schools of the UAE to have young ambassadors for the expo because we had a team of our senior students who actually went to um, uh, the UK. They attended um, you know, the Global Youth uh, Leadership Conference, uh, uh, a, a program, a training program that they uh, attend and we send teams uh, every year. And these young ambassadors, because the expo team, the school, you know, they used to come to school, the, they, they had these school visits and they'd already started speaking to the school students about this. These young ambassadors actually spoke about that there. And with about, um, you know, uh, students from about 100 odd countries uh, attending the, um, the conference and the uh, workshop, I think that was one great connect we made as a school uh, to the expo. Um, also, the fact that you know, the themes, um, you know, we're talking about opportunity, we're talking about mobility, we're talking about sustainability, um, not themes. I'm sure everyone out here is going to agree to that, that they, they literally values that we are living and breathing every day in our classrooms. And I'm sure everyone in their personal lives, you know, the countries, the world that is participating. So uh, that kind of a connect um, to the point that, you know, as a school leadership team, we had, um, uh, you know, uh, something that we kind of brought in a change was in our school leadership, uh, student leadership body. Um, opportunity for all is what the expo says. And that was something that we had also taken forward uh, where we divested, you know, the student leadership from the hands of a few to actually forming councils where more and more students could have participate in leadership activities, opportunities, um, leading projects and so on. So when 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 the actual theme and value came to the front, it was like an absolute endorsement of what we believed in. So that was a great connect we made. Also, the fact that um, you know the legacy of UAE at one of the themes, there was um, the story of uh, my culture, uh, Samim as they called it. So we actually borrowed this as the theme for our Arabic and Islamic interschool uh, festival that we just recently hosted in school with schools from the UAE attending. Um, it, it was a celebration of uh, the Arabic and Islamic culture. So connection is what I you know, want to bring in and that connection continues as we send students out every day, uh, you know, some grade or the other visiting the expo. Yes, yeah. and looking forward to continuing that with after the holidays too. Yeah. Thank you so much, Priya. Actually, it's I, I love the word connection and the way you are connecting and having students uh, not only visiting the uh, expo, but also having interaction and engagement with the activities that is uh, that are taking place in expo. That is and I could feel the passion and uh, uh, excitement even with uh, you as an educator. So uh, let's move to uh, Domini. Um, to what extent you believe that this is an opportunity to develop the skills of our students in the school as an educator? Hi, um, from the artistic perspective, just being in an environment where you can see different cultures, you can see different type of history within the growth of a country through the art scene, it really helped my DP kids, especially understanding the connection between the history of a country the history of something that you're trying to create or recreate. Um, it's an amazing opportunity. It was an amazing uh, event to be a part of and actually absorb it from an artistic perspective that it can be um, distributed through the classroom, distributed through their artwork, distributed through their paintings and just having the exposure and the culture of seeing what is offered and that they can also learn and recreate it for themselves. 
Yeah, thank you very much. And um, especially when it comes to art and the work that is being there, it's just inspiring. So I can understand how the students can relate and inspired with such beautiful artwork that is there at Expo. So Perry, I know yeah, that you visited Expo uh, over the past few months. And what is your reflection as a student? Uh, what do you think? How did this experience impact you as a learner or as a student? Thank you so much. Last month, uh, students from our school, uh, we went and uh, visited the expo, uh, the expo site, and this was for the event, which was the Design for Change I Can Children Summit. The Design for Change, the organization, that's true ethos, is to you know connect children and drive social, drive social entrepreneurship among the youth. Its whole ethos is actually summarized into four words: feel, imagine, do, share. And through these four, uh, through these four processes, they aim to build social competencies and pioneer, pioneer this progressive way of thinking to schools and children. So last month, GMA actually hosted the ICANN summit at the Indian Pavilion, partnering with DSC and the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry. So for this national round. Over 22 private schools from across the UAE congregated at the Indian Pavilion and the Terra Auditorium to share the stories that the students, to share the stories of students driving change in their communities. So these superheroes related their stories to the 16 SDGs. And uh, 15 projects from these were selected for the International Summit, which will be held on 18th December. In the International Summit, we're inviting students from all over the globe, over seven countries. Modern actually sponsored uh, a few students whose uh, financial limitations did not allow them initially, but Modern is giving them the opportunity to experience this wonderful platform and make the best of it. Excellent. Along That's go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Right. So apart from the presentations, the ICANN also hosts a marketplace where students who are selling products can gain access to a community of millions of people who are willing to support these children in scaling their social causes worldwide. And I feel that this, this is an excellent opportunity for anyone who is you know, working towards a cause that's passionate, that they're passionate towards and taking that to the next level. OK, thank you so much. That's interesting, especially the participation of other schools from 22 schools uh, uh, around UAE and to take part in such important event, especially at Expo. It's definitely a great opportunity for all of our students, so that's great. Thank you so much. Uh, do we have Ibrahim from University American School or someone other student? I have Ibrahim as a name. Oh, sorry, oh, it's Karen, sorry, sorry. Karen. Karen. Hi, Karen. How are you? So what kind of um, I'm, I'm sure you visited Expo and if you tell us as a student, how did Expo impact uh, you as a learner inside the classroom, maybe at home? Uh, what impact did you did it have on you as a student? Yeah, so we visited Expo as a grade 12 um, and I the takeaways were um, present even after, right after leaving Expo, because um, I think the uh, audience interactive um, activities that they had, and the presence of the presence of so much culture and art and history and technology and innovation, uh, were uh, really relevant. And the takeaways um, and the impacts were in the sense that, for me personally, as an IB Art DP student. I uh, learned or I have observed how much intention and meaning goes into every single piece created. I know in the Italian pavilion, um, they had a big sculpture in the middle and they um, with the astronomy at the top and I took away the rich meaning and history and intention behind that and how to apply that to my own artwork. Um, and I know my peers have done the same. So it was a really great experience getting to apply um, firsthand what we saw into the artwork we created in our own uh, individual ways. 
Interesting and good luck for your uh, as well portfolio. I'm sure you're working on your AP portfolio or IV portfolio as well. So let's go to Talin. Talin, welcome. Uh, you know you had technical problem. Um, just um, as a student and you visited Expo only yesterday, what are your feedback? Uh, how did you find it as a first time visiting Expo? What kind of things you learned uh, during your visit there? All right, so um, I apologize for the mistake I had. I had some technical issues, but now everything's working. Uh, yesterday, actually, I had the opportunity to visit Expo 2020. Actually, when I tell you I was amazed, it's an understatement because once we arrived there, you know, the flags at the entrance, I was amazed of how they want to describe their theme and to describe their goal in which it is creating the future and being able to connect our minds together in the country's minds which they described it in the best ways possible, in which every country had its own pavilion there. I had the opportunity to visit three pavilions and every single pavilion is different than the other. Every single one of them describes a different thing. And you know, you get attached to it. When you enter, you get amazed. And I believe that was one of Expo and Dubai's goals, in which they just want people to look at Expo and to be and of how amazing it looks and how amazing they achieved and successfully achieved their goal which everyone is amazed in this every pavilion described a different thing described the country in the best ways possible in which when you enter the pavilion you enter a whole new world which i believe one of the best ones i actually visited was switzerland they made you feel like you're actually in switzerland everything that's there is too visual when you look at it you just say it's amazing and this impacted us as a school and as students in which every we celebrate at the opening of Expo 2020 in so many different ways at school. We try to release it related to our lessons, our classes, our projects. Even our bell was uh, part of the music you know, of the Expo 2020 video. And I'm actually amazed of how Dubai was able to achieve this amazing goal and how their strategy for it was. It was actually perfect and I'm really, really proud to say that I'm a member of AKIS, which had a part in Expo 2020. Thank you so much, Talian. Thank you so much. And I'm sure that because you just visited Expo yesterday, the ideas are still fresh in your head and you feel so much amazed, as you said, with the experience you had yesterday. Going back to Priya, um, as a teaching and learning coach, did you work as a school to um, integrate uh, the uh, themes of Expo in your curriculum? And what impact did you see on the students' learning? Oh, absolutely, you know, and uh, th this is what we consider the Expo to be all teachers when whenever we are, you know, collaborating together, a friend, um, you know, as teachers, we are constantly looking for um, the best for our children, the best kind of experience that we want to plan, but that the challenge of time is something that kind of holds us back. But this friend of ours who presented us with a cache of resources, you know, the Expo School website, is such a wonderful store of the learning engagements and to have such detailed lesson plans and uh, the resources that we could use. For example, um, we had the biodiversity unit uh, that the grade fives, they were exploring the importance of conserving uh, biodiversity. And um, as part of the action, that's what they were looking at. How could they you know, conserve the species that um, are endangered? And we found this ex excellent source, uh, which was AI for Wildlife, uh, a lesson on um, the website um, that actually helps um, create bots that can recognize and spot, uh, you know, species that are endangered. And through that, we got our children to even get to know the wildlife of the UAE. So this is a wonderful way of connecting the two um, STEAM education, as you say, where they were designing those bots and getting to know the science that they were you know actually exploring in the classroom our grade threes in fact they had a unit on uh, technology and they were looking at how humans integrate uh, technology in their everyday lives to solve problems and to find this wonderful lesson um, human uh, 2050 which talked about you know robots and how robots could help in uh, solving everyday problems they looked at designing arms the robotic arm and the you know, the joy that we found in the eyes of our children when we took them to one of the pavilions was Kazakhstan. I'm sure like Switzerland uh, that uh, 
uh, she mentioned when we went yes when we went to kazakhstan we saw the robotic arm and the children were amazed at its working so that kind of inspiration and motivation really works in our classrooms um, you know the teacher inspiration ideas where we got these uh, small um, uh, modules these expo quests that they had uh, launched uh, children, you know, going out on those treasure hunts to find the clues. So uh, we went into the sustainability pavilion where um, we were looking at uh, green energy. There was a treasure hunt in the Mission Possible uh, um, section and to find uh, those little clues and, you know, solve the uh, problems that were set there and through those clues and come up with the green solutions and find um, examples from all over the world where individuals are being those positive change makers. So our school mission and vision actually connects to that. We are looking at making our children positive change makers. And when they see this happening in front of them, that kind of an, um, you know, the abstract becoming concrete is uh, they they these have served as great provocations for our children as they come back into the classrooms and we are able to take the learning forward. So thank you to the expo. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It's accelerating uh, the uh, student learning as well inside the classroom. Uh, so if I go to Patty, uh, Talene mentioned that she was amazed with the Switzerland pavilion. What about you? Which pavilion you felt that it's amazing or you felt inspired with the work that was done? We were able to visit the Indian pavilion as well as the Singaporean pavilion. So at the Indian Pavilion, uh, did showcase India's various qualities, you know, such as one really important thing is yoga and its various health benefits. Uh, actually, our Prime Minister himself, he himself practices yoga in the public to encourage people to, you know, embrace that sort of lifestyle. Apart from that, it also explored the technological advancements of the various government agencies in India. And we also got a chance to explore, you know, the uh, developments in the private sector. Companies like, uh, you know, Tata, ISBN, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so a lot of these companies, they're making huge strides and, you know, driving technological change at the forefront. And a lot of that was displayed at the Indian Pavilion and we were able to experience that. At the Singaporean Pavilion, it, it was a completely new set, right? They had done a completely vertical garden and everywhere you look, is this green with plants and it's truly amazing how you know such an intricate structure can be can be converted into an eco-friendly one where every square inch of area is being used to give back to the environment and i think that that was truly wonderful all right that's fair enough and what about karin what what do you think the most of uh, the best uh, pavilion you felt so much inspired about uh, personally, I really enjoyed the Lebanese. Um, and I, re I really enjoyed seeing uh, how they represented Lebanon with the swings and the nice um, the videos that they had and they presented as well some sculptures and some of the artworks there. Alongside Lebanon, I really did enjoy visiting the Italian pavilion. Um, I learned that there was actually no air conditioning. The pavilion was surrounded by ropes and it provided the air conditioning inside. And the uh, ground and the floor was actually created by um, orange uh, people, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so getting to see again these uh, interactive and audience um, inter in audience interactive um, activities and uh, things that they had planned, such as the swings, as well as the uh, creativity of the orange peels on the ground was uh, a really big uh, takeaway and it was really interesting to see. Interesting. That's good that you gave two examples with different reasons and this is the beauty of uh, Expo as well. We feel home in Dubai definitely and at the UAE, but at the same time, once we visit Expo, we would love to see our country's pavilion and the way we react and interact with it. That's absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. And um, uh, Domini, 
I know that you are an art and you are in charge of art and design, but as a teacher, did Expo give you the chance to, as a teacher, to interact and uh, uh, with other teachers and collaborate to, to integrate certain concepts with other subjects? Did you have this as an opportunity to integrate certain concepts um, just based on the themes? Yes, actually. It it stepped it stepped up the game to have you thinking outside the box of how you deliver things from a realistic perspective to our modern day kids in our in our classroom um it kind of urged us as teachers within our environment to now merge interdisciplinary units see how we can no longer segregate what we're teaching for our students but to ensure that they see the use of how it merges and what can actually come from it when we see things working together um, within my department, I always try to tell or, or express that we're like an engine. One does not work without the other. If we all work together and have us doing things that are integrated and in intertwined with each other, then you actually see the real meaning of education. You actually see the real meaning of the future. We're teaching students for a future that does not exist as yet. So what we are doing and what Expo is exposing us to is a future that we didn't imagine that would have happened. So now as educators, we're taking these things, merging them together within our schools and our department to show the kids how they can do it, how they, they can achieve things like this, starting with their classrooms. OK, perfect. So let's go back to Talin. Talin, you, you mentioned that you like the uh, Switzerland uh, pavilion in particular, but based on your experience and visit, what takeaways you feel you're going, it changed you, the way you think, the way you uh, maybe study, uh, what kind of reflection you took out of this uh, visit? Uh, actually, I took so many reflections off of this visit in which when you look at Expo 2020, you see how all of these countries, they put their hands together and they achieved their goal. In just a couple of years, this dream became an actual reality in which it taught me so many morals of never giving up. And if you want something to happen, it will happen. You just have to work hard for it. And you have to put all of your effort into it, which describes Dubai and other countries in which they all put their hands together because they want to show people what does it mean to be in one group, one hand, one group that's connected. That's why one of its themes was connecting minds, be, being able to create the future, in which when you go to Expo, you see all of these pavilions. You're amazed of how all of these places were all put in one single place. And you were able to experience a part of every single country. If you're amazed with one part of every pavilion, which describes a, a country, how will you be amazed or what way will you be amazed if you actually go to the country and you experience everything? Thinking about this just amazes me and makes me think of how strong Dubai was in order to do this and how it described so many different morals with just one single act which it changed students themselves in classrooms, in universities, in colleges, people that actually work now, grown-ups. It changed everyone. It gave them a different perspective of how to build their own future. Uh, absolutely, and how to problem solve things and how to create solutions for the problems they have based on the resources they have as well. Um, did you ever heard of Expo before 2020? It's uh, before Dubai 2020. Students who can just give me an answer, yes or no? Talene, did you ever he hear of Expo before Dubai? Uh, yes, actually, uh, I remember in fifth grade it was to um, let's say let's call it the center of Expo 2020 in which we had this like I don't know how to describe it we just had a trip there with the school and we had to color this type of fish or something like it's about coral reef in the ocean and stuff like that it was designs and you just had to color them with a certain type of wax and they introduced us to it and they said that once Expo 2020 opens then those will be hanged there so I remember them mentioning this and then because of the pandemic and all of those global problems they weren't able to open it and now we remembered it again and we were able to embrace this amazing goal that Dubai has achieved with one of the virtual the first virtual match list of AKIS which I believe this was the start of a new beginning yeah thank you so much Talene any other comments from the students did you have you ever heard of Expo where did it happen before Dubai 
All right, so in 2015, it was in Italy, and I was lucky to escort uh, 50, 12 students to visit Expo 2015 in Milan. And that's why Italian was in grade five at that time, or even earlier when we had certain activities to prepare our students. But to be honest, uh, I visited Expo 2015 and I learned a lot during that time. Uh, but in comparison to Dubai, it's totally, totally, it's even amazing is an understatement as Talene mentioned. It's a, 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 a better, not better, but it's a higher standards when it comes to everything. So I was lucky to compare or I was lucky to see the difference between two different Expo. People think Expo is the same everywhere, but no, in Dubai it's totally different. Everything is different. So I just wondered if someone heard about Expo before uh, Dubai because it's there in the Middle East for the first time. It's the first Arab country that is inviting all uh, the countries around the world to be in one place. Any comments from uh, the uh, panelists? Any uh, other thoughts and ideas you would like to share about the celebration in your school? We're good on time, so anybody? Priya, would you like? Yeah, I can. You're still muted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, you know, I was just, you know, listening to uh, everyone. I was thinking about uh, what you rightly said about bringing countries together. You know, what the pandemic actually restricted the expo open doors. Um, you know, for us um, uh, as a newly, um, uh, you know, we are just new into the PYP program and with our grade fives going into the first exhibition, this was one of the worries that we all as educators had because the true experience and the true experiential learning would happen if, if, when they're inquiring and actively trying to collect information. We were looking at how are they going to access people? How are they going to access other um, you know, resources other than just the internet and the books that are available to them? And to have this wonderful world majlis that um, you know the expo is uh, floating with leaders and uh, uh, you know small modules of their perspectives coming up, even those being um, uh, being made available to us in the form of essays and things like that. So that actual primary research that they were all looking forward to, we could give them that experience. So in spite of, like I said, being restricted, this opened that avenue for us. So that was um, it was it was something that we all celebrated in school to say that, you know, it's going the experience is going to be as it was true to all other schools which had probably gone into the PYP before us. So that was a wonderful thing. Also, um, you know, it's given us a wonderful opportunity to collaborate with a school in Finland, and we're looking forward to having some um, uh, presentations and performances when they come here. Uh, they're coming to the UAE in February. So we are looking forward to that exchange of, uh, you know, getting to know their cultures, understanding them better, but more importantly, actually um, embarking on a design project. Uh, that we are doing together, something on 3D printing. So excited, looking forward, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Yes. Thank you so much. And Dominique, uh, when it comes to you know, we're having the end of Expo by uh, end of March. Uh, I'm sure everyone. We wouldn't want to have this event over because we're so much excited and uh, we are uh, so much happy to have such event in Dubai. But what do you think what will happen when it comes to teaching and learning after Expo? Would this have an impact on the way we think with curriculum mapping, curriculum planning, lesson plans and the activities and teaching strategies inside the classroom? Um, I genuinely predict that it would be a tradition or a lifestyle of lesson planning that will continue to keep opening doors, to keep kicking doors down to how we teach and how we deliver. Um, we are no longer in the era of a teacher centered classroom. We are in the era of kids are inquiring, they're researching, they're hunger for knowledge. And what Expo did was bringing everything to your fingertips, even a little bit closer than Google did. So you are there, you're touching, feeling, you're, all of your senses are being highlighted, right? Or excited. So now for us as educators, um, we have to literally take what we have given, we have gotten from Expo and now start to plug that in and each year keep learning and growing with our kids and having them teaching us of what is needed for the future so that we can make it for them. And I'm not only talking from a 
art perspective, but also as a TOK teacher, I do have to ensure that they're thinking from a critical, practical and an innovative perspective and having my grade 12 experiencing expo right before they go off to the big world, they experience the world so that they now can have a more open way of conceptual thinking and I would say analyzing stuff better. And we teachers, we have we have a lot of stuff in the UAE to offer to us. We just have to keep it going. OK, and uh, thank you very much. That's a good point. And even when I say you mentioned the students are the center, uh, we all agree with you. And now we're having we're seeing the students sitting with us on the same panel, discussing the same topic, speaking the same language. So definitely they wouldn't go back to square one, maybe sometimes when it comes to traditional way of teaching, because now their expectations are high. We always say we have high expectations as teachers and educators, but now I believe the students across the UAE have, have higher expectations, especially after this wonderful experience. Uh, any, any, fee, any comments before moving to Magnus? Uh, Magnus has two activities. All right, great Magnus. Are you there? Yeah, here you go. Just gonna hand one second. Uh, thank you so, so much. Can you all hear me? Yes. Yeah, you know, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much, Kerry. Wonderful to hear all of you share your experience with Visiting Expo. Uh, I just have a, a question as well myself, to particularly to the students, you know, uh, with all the impressions and everything you've seen and touched and felt when it comes to Expo, has, has that altered a change when it comes to how you wish to, what what type of career you see yourself studying in the future, has that changed anything at all? Or has has Expo uh, changed for you when it comes to what type of career you would like to see in the future? Did, did any of you go in uh, with, with the impression of something and then come out differently? Uh, because the the world is our oyster in the sense that you know. When, when myself, when I was a kid, you know, all we wanted to do was, was become lawyers, engineers, or veterinarians and such. But now with the multimedia, with, with, with you know, with art and anything to do with IT, with internet, has, has that changed, particularly with, with, the, with the, the motto of Expo? So over to you kids. I'd love to hear your answers. I'd love Are? to share. Yeah, I'd yeah. love to share. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, sorry. All right, so uh, one very traditional career choice among in, in Indian households, at least, is uh, engineering, right? And uh, with I have a great interest in physics and mathematics, and that's what I planned on pursuing after school. But uh, at the Indian at the Expo, there's a pavilion by A R Rahman uh, that is dedicated to music, and the, the sheer brilliance with which they've dedicated so much space just to you know the art of music and the, the lifestyle that follows that art that encouraged me to uh, you know change my career choice and now i plan on pursuing acoustic engineering with uh, with applications of ai and machine learning wow that's impressive well, wonderful wonderful to hear wonderful to hear what about you karin any thoughts i wouldn't particularly say it changed my perspective, I went in with a clear um, career, if you would consider it ahead of me, but I would say it definitely has modified my view on um, the artistic perspective. Um, it has it has modified my view of what could consider or what is considered to be art and how art is presented and how it is um, mo or modified or created. And um, and the, the meaning of art to me has uh, also been exemplified throughout Expo uh, through the different uh, pavilions in many different ways. You have videos, you have uh, sculptures, you have um, different architectural uh, structures of the pavilions. So it was it has not changed my career, but it has modified the way I view the arts and how um, I could create artwork in the future and um, to to be unique to me and what I want to say. Um, and yeah. Wonderful. I, I, I want to um, uh, just build on that. I think that's uh, that's a, uh, some fantastic statements there because I, I remember myself when I was a kid, art was very much, you know, a sculpture or a painting, but art is so, so much more now. 
and particularly I think Expo has been wonderful with 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 the various installations. You know, you can sit on the swing, you can touch the rope, you can see it, feel it, taste it almost, you know. It's it's almost like 5D, 6D, you know, it's it's that interactive space is something that 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 I think the 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 whole art world has been very impressive with over the last, I think we'd say 10, 15 years. And so there's endless opportunities, not just if you're not, you might not be good at drawing, there's so much more that you can do within the art world. So that is just simply wonderful. Um, yes, thank you so, so much, everyone. I will uh, now just like you to, like you to, sorry, yeah. I would now like to draw your attention back to menti.com if that's possible. We have two very simple questions left. So if you could all just stay on or log on to menti.com, you'll see the code in the right hand side of the screen. I will share my screen as well. Um, one second here. Let me get my out this right. So um, there we go. So um, Please, if everybody could just give your uh, thoughts regarding the overall satisfaction when it came to the quality of the content of the webinar, the structure of this webinar, and the presenters' preparedness in responding to questions. Appreciate your, your input there. That would be wonderful. Once you're all doing that and putting the uh, your numbers in there, uh, if we could move on also to the next question what has been the main takeaway from today's webinar we've had some wonderful input from both teachers and students uh, regarding their impressions of of expo and how they've used the expo material the the school content in their classroom and also expectations for your future careers and so forth what has been the main takeaway from today's webinar Do we have any, any, some of you might have left the webinar, but those of you that are still here, if there's anybody who has some last minute takeaways for today's webinar, we'd appreciate that. Wonderful, one person, the variety of experiences that can be uh, accessed by different groups of students, something for everyone, absolutely. Wonderful, thank you so much for that answer. Yes, uh, Expo certainly has, has. Uh, I think the, the beauty, uh, that, just like one of the students said, the beauty of getting so many countries, so many nations together in one spot and where we can all collaborate and showcase our individual strength that I think is wonderful to get, get, I think it was up to about 195 countries in total that are participating in this expo, which is which is amazing, absolutely amazing. And another question is how much art we uh, that can be seen here? Yeah. One of, I think that this expo has really done it right when it comes to art and art installations with the, the feature of, 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 of the various elements like sand, water, uh, uh, wind and so forth and solar powers and 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 moving trees and and the use the use of the green uh, connecting minds and creating the future certainly a generation that appreciates innovation wonderful wonderful we have somebody saying appreciating what the world can bring to our future how it can all reflect in our day-to-day -day life and educational experience absolutely absolutely i want to say a big thank you for those who have answered, wonderful. And I want to say thank you for those of you who have participated and, and viewed our, our webinar today. I'm now going to hand over to Gadir and all the students and teachers for some final words. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Magnus. Uh, I'm not sure what's happening with the connection. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can hear you, yeah. OK, so let me uh, just one uh, word uh, as a takeaway from this webinar and what would you like to say for to the attendees about Expo? Uh, let me start with Talin. Yes, actually, I really was amazed with how every single student had their own idea and own perspective of Expo and how it has affected or changed their perspective of life and how people can actually be connected, not only people in countries and how everything can be collected in one single place. I really enjoyed this webinar and it was such a pleasure meeting all of you. Thank you so much, Talene. Let's go to Priya. 
Yeah, so I started with connection and I'm going to continue and you know probably end with that connection. The connection that you know the experts even brought here to listen to these young minds and their expressions and know that the future is so secure. I think that's that's what I'm going to and that's my takeaway from here and that's what I'm going to you know keep with me. Yes. Thank you, Priya and Pari. Hi. I think like when we see in Dubai, we're exposed to tons of amazing technology and developments, right? And sometimes we just look at them and we don't really acknowledge them. We don't realize how advanced it is and the privilege that we have of experiencing it firsthand. And you know, preparing for this webinar helped me realize that I've, I was given such a wonderful opportunity to interact with students from all across UAE and you know, learn about their stories of social change. And I feel that if you're visiting the expo and almost at any pavilion, you will be exposed to so much social entrepreneurship and people caring for the for others around them as well as the environment. And I think that's that's a really amazing thing about the expo. Thank you so much. And what about you, Domini? Um, I would say for to anyone that is going to visit the expo. Go with an empty mind because when you're leaving, it's going to be overflowing with unimaginable things that you didn't even know existed and get ready to travel after because you don't want to see more. <laughs> Excellent. And Karin, uh, what about you? Uh, I would say diverse. The uh, expo was so diverse in the term that no pavilion was uh, the same as the other. No, what they had, what every pavilion had to offer was unique to the country and the country's history. And um, even here in this webinar, the students' ideas were so diverse in the sense that um, each of us enjoyed a different aspect, but united us uh, in the sense that we enjoyed expo as a whole. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's amazing. And I would like to add something based on uh, your thoughts uh, and idea. Uh, as a generation, I believe uh, the UAE students are super lucky to have such opportunity to visit the expo, not only once, but more than one times with the school and with their families to get exposed to different learning experiences and different ideas that will uh, enhance their learning experience, not only inside the classroom, but also at the university level, and even it will impact their careers in the future. So we are so, so lucky to have uh, such opportunity as educators and teachers, and I was uh, so happy to have such discussion and different from perspectives from students and educators. It's lovely to see our students on the same panel, to hear your voice, to hear your perspectives, to understand what do you think about this great experience. And it was uh, uh, great, I believe, the way you presented uh, your feedback and reflection based on your visits. Thank you very much. And uh, I hope you enjoy the winter break and more visits to Expo, uh, inshallah, in the coming few weeks. Thank you so much, Magnus. Yes, uh, <clears throat> thank you, Gadir. It was a wonderful, wonderful webinar. Thank you all students and teachers for participating. It's been absolutely wonderful. Uh, I, I'm certainly taking away uh, um, a lot of the, the 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 impressions from you that you know uh, th this this has been a fantastic you know creation that we've developed here in Dubai Expo 2020. And I also want to just build on what a lot of you have said as well. I think what we've done really well here in, in Dubai is that we we've enabled uh, the plethora of 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 of, of uh, humans to come visit to visit uh, expo 2020 you know everyone from from young kids to to elders you know to to to, to uh, special needs and so forth the support that is around for any visually impaired for any hearing impaired it caters to everyone and that i think is is a wonderful symbol to to take away from this expo uh, so from 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 my side i want to say a big big thank you to all of you for for attending and for for visiting this webinar uh, I'm sure we will have more Expo webinars coming on in next year, so keep your ears and eyes open. But from us, I want to say a big thank you and have a wonderful afternoon, everybody. Bye-bye.